Good afternoon, guys. It's Jager262, and welcome back to Armored Warfare. It is still Christmas in July here for me on my account, and that is very true for the vehicle I'm covering in today's video, which is the M50 Ontos. Now, this is the... Oh, God, what is it called? Rank? Rank, hold on, let me check. Rank. I was going to call it a level, but it's really better. It is the rank 10 reward vehicle. It's also the first reward vehicle you get for doing the battle path. Uh, still not a fan of this battle path. Uh, some of the missions aren't really working for me yet either. And they're just kind of weird. I don't think I'm going to do anything else since this is really the only thing I want it from it. But you will have to do a fair bit of grinding for this because leading up to it, I think 8 and 9 are 1500. <coughs> Excuse me. 1500 battle points or battle coins but the Antos is 3300 and this one's 3300 and I think it just goes up exponentially from there so we'll see how that goes but either way this has been as you know from when I was doing all my videos on vehicles being added what was going to happen with the French tech tree and asking you guys what were some of your most anticipated vehicles. This one made my top five. I really wanted the M50 Antos in the game. It's just one of those quirky vehicles that played one very specific role in one very specific conflict. It was made just for the Vietnam War to be used by the United States Marines and it was never used after that. In fact, it wasn't even used after the assault on Way City in 68 where most of them were destroyed and or turned into tractors to help move troops and supplies out of the area so it was actually only used for maybe a combined year in its design role as a light support tank killer which is why i didn't think they were ever going to put it into the game i'm so happy that they did it is of course a tank destroyer just like it was in the real world and it packs six recoilless guns which is pretty devastating it's the same kind of damage you can expect from say the OA-82 which is an AFV at this tier that uses two recoilless guns uh, it's standard heat rounds do 400 to 633 damage with 450 millimeters of penetration which is actually pretty good it is quite a devastating vehicle and I'm going to actually compare the stats really quick with other ones instead of just reading them all out and then doing it but it is quite impressive not going to lie i've already played it a little bit beyond the gameplay i'm going to show you in this video today and i don't know it's just it's it's everything i wanted from this vehicle to be quite honest except for a few gripes here and there which i'll show you right now so assuming uh though Two of these three are premium, but the LAV300 is just stock here for that purpose because I sold mine. So I don't really know how the stats are going to change for that one. But at least for the Shaw OS or the LAV150 90mm, these stats don't change. So, of course, right off the bat, it does the most average damage at 460. And again, it can do up to 630 damage which I did it a couple of times and it feels great from a vehicle that's so small. It gets the best penetration by a huge margin, 120 more than the 90 millimeter on the LAV, which is crazy. Bringing its damage per minute to a whopping 5,200 at tier four, which is very good. However, first gripe I have with it, the reload time is 30 seconds. And this is to offset this crazy high DPM. So just like with ATGMs that have long reloads, it's kind of the idea however I will say it works like any other clip so you t well it's not a clip in real life but the six recoilless rifles um, load up all at the same time and what I mean by that is 30 seconds to reload six tr roughly translates into about four seconds I think when I did it to one so if you fire one and you know you lose, you get spotted and you want to reposition, just hit reload, just hit the C button like you would do for a clip, and it'll take four seconds. If you fire all six, it's 30 seconds, and then you can 
you know, change how long it's going to take you to reload depending on how many shots you fired. That was a really long way to say that. I apologize, but it's not as bad as it seems is what I'm trying to say. I usually fire all six, so I always wait the 30 seconds unless I have to move or reposition. And that's why it's a bad... It's a bad reload time for me, but it's actually, if you just do one at a time, comparative to each one of these vehicles. It's about 4 seconds. 4.5 seconds, so in between them. Uh, hit points, it only gets 1,200. It's actually the weakest of the vehicles, but it does get the best armor. However, 20 millimeters of military aluminum isn't going to block anything, so I would not recommend trying to trade shots. This vehicle in the game is intended to be an ambush vehicle which is what all tds are in my opinion however what they mean by that is you have to get closer than most tds and you will have to run a lot more than most tds and i'll get into that a little bit later in reality you don't have to if you play it right but they're just doing that because again i really don't think that there's any vehicle that's been implemented into Armored Warfare. Like, I, there's a lot of things about the game I still don't like, or we all know what they could be doing better in general. But I don't think I've ever had a problem with vehicle design and vehicle play, except for maybe the swing fire. But they do a really great job of implementing it. So the reason they say that is because in the real world, the Antos is an ambush vehicle. It's a very close quarters kind of um, infantry and anti-armor vehicle. Uh, moving down the tree from defense to mobility, it's actually going to be the slowest tank destroyer. And that's, again, back to Armored Warfare, in my opinion. And I'm going to stop <laughs> praising them here in a second. But they just do a really great way of bringing in actual military characteristics of real vehicles into the game. Instead of like making some vehicles that may or may not have even existed ridiculously powerful, like other games... But we won't get into that. It's going to be very slow. It's going to have the second best acceleration though. So not too bad. It weighs the least out of all the other vehicles. It was originally an airborne vehicle. And it's hold traverse is 64 degrees per second. And the reason that's important, and I'll get down to that part right now, is the turret traverse is only going to be 45.76 degrees a second. The reason that that's important is because it doesn't actually have a turret. The M50 Antos, which I'll show you in the gameplay in the next video I do on this, had a 40 degree spread from a fixed position. So while it has the best turret traverse, it doesn't really have <laughs> a turret. So max turret rotation 80 degrees. Oh, I'm sorry, I said 40, it's 80. That's the stat that's important. Um, doo -doo -doo. But it does get a very fast hull traverse. And another reason why that's special is because next to the Viesel at tier 5, it is the only track tank destroyer in the game, I believe. Nope, there's a tier 3 one. There's the M13 ACAV that's also tracked. Anyway, moving on. 48% camouflage all the way around. Excellent. It's supposed to be an ambush vehicle. Uh, it gets a view range on the move of 400 meters, which is great. I don't know why they don't give you a view range stopped. I think it's just going to be the same 400 meters, but you can always boost those stats. It gets negative 10 degrees of depression. Uh, aim time is 2.13 seconds, so it's going to be the slowest. Or I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. It's not going to be the slowest, but it's not going to be the best either. And the reason that this is not really great is because of the min spread of 0 0.3, which is one of the worst in the game. And that is my biggest gripe and the only gripe I really wish they would fix. But at the same time, I know they won't because in reality, that's how the guns work. And so because it has... This out of the way... First things first, um, before I get into that, it just goes from here, 40 degrees that way, 40 degrees that way, left to right. Uh, because it has six 
recoilless rifles that are in all kinds of weird positions. Obviously, these two here are going to be the most accurate. Uh, I've missed a lot of shots using this one right here that have just gone into walls or into terrain that I just was not paying attention to. And at the same time, the firing sequence, if I can remember, it goes right, left, right, left, right, left. Instead of just doing all three from one side, all three from the other side, which is a mechanic I thought they were going to implement, but didn't. And because of that, it is crazy inaccurate. You can snipe with it. The description of it says you're going to have to go really close and shotgun people like um, the rocket pods on the MTBS. But that's not true. I've been sniping with it quite well. But that's also I've been only shooting one or two rounds at a time instead of all six. Obviously, when you're in a closer combat situation, you have to get out of there really fast. I would definitely recommend shotgunning opponents. But usually what I do is just double tap and then get out of the way. And that's how I would recommend playing this vehicle. Because in real life, it was meant to do shotgun tactics. Be quickly on the move, hide, fire six rounds into oncoming targets, and then leave. Obviously, Armored Warfare is not going to be played like that. You're going to be facing a lot of enemies all at once. You're going to have to hide because you have no real armor. Even with the angle, it's not really going to block anything at all. So I would recommend just firing one or two of the recoilless rifles and then moving on. Because you do get a pretty great amount of firepower with them. And they are very accurate. But not to waste the full potential of the vehicle feel free to fire all six in close range because it is devastating there too almost like a mini mtbs at this tier and i really hope i'm not butchering that thing's name so just for the sake of posterity here let me see if i can find it there it is mtlbs8 i was butchering its name so for anybody who's new to the game and doesn't know what this is, this is the vehicle I've been <laughs> giving the misnomer to. A uh, highly inaccurate, unguided rocket pod vehicle at tier 6. It is going to play fairly similar. Oh, and this is the 0882, by the way, for anybody who doesn't know. That uses two recoilless rifles as well. It is going to be just as inaccurate as the that at very long range but much more accurate than this you know the mt at medium range i think this is a very effective sniper personally at mid range it is a devastating weapon at close range and all around super excited to have this vehicle in the game i'm very happy i know this video has been really long so thank you so much for watching uh, i'm going to put up some gameplay footage of this vehicle in a separate video like i did with the leclerc Hopefully I'll be able to actually get onto some PvP games and I can show you what it's like there. But in PvE, it's a monster. I absolutely love it. So please, you know, throw up a thumbs up if you enjoy the content and want to see more of the Battle Path vehicles, more of the Antos, just more Armored Warfare content in general. It goes a long way to not only supporting the channel, but letting me know what you guys are kind of looking for when I do these videos and these updates. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to get notified when I will be uploading the M50 Antos gameplay video, either later today or early tomorrow. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.